Might as well record. All right, so Scotty 3K here. So I wanted to give you guys a full snapshot, really, of what the business should look like for you on a day-to-day. -day. And what we're going to do is we're going to structure it from a timeline standpoint. You know, what we're going to break it down from second to minute to hour to what your week should look like to what your month should look like to what your six month outlook should look like and then transitioning into the the last quarter of every year how you can start to pivot and really accelerate your your pay one your what you're making what you're being profitable as and then from there scaling your skill set to really maximize your business and your license to the fullest degree so like i said if regardless of where you're at if you're doing good like like anyone on this screen if you're doing well right now then keep doing what you're doing. But psychologically, I want you guys to get a good gauge of what I did personally, like I said, to go from zero to six figures, right? And I want to just get a raise of hands real quick because I, I don't know who really has a six-figure income here, um, but raise your hand right now if 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 you want to go to a six-figure income. I'd like to I like to see like who who really actually really, really wants to hit six figures here. Like, because at the end of the day, if your goal really isn't to hit six figures, I mean, you can go make 50, 60 grand a year at a, at a corporate job. And I don't mean to sound like that, but you can do it a lot easier somewhere else with a lot less stress. Again, this is entrepreneurship. This is a type of business where you got to put your back against the wall. But what comes with that is extreme discipline, extreme um, accountability towards yourself and ex extreme vision and then ex ex extreme um, honing in on your skill set and doing constant learning and developing every day. So you're first, you're new, right? And let me just erase this real quick. I don't want you guys to see too early, but you're new, you're, if you're new, right? And like I said, we all press the reset button. Your first six to nine months in this business I want you guys to really focus in on what I like to call the triangle, okay? Your triangle is how you take care of yourself physically, how you take care of yourself spiritually, and then how you take care of yourself financially. I believe that your triangle, right, if I can spell that, right, triangle is going to come down to your physical, right, your uh your spiritual and then your money situation okay these are the three things that you have to balance in your life if you want to really have a, a profitable and enjoyable experience and make a lot of money and be somewhat you know healthy that's what i how i feel so for your 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 first six months here what, what your schedule is everything so Maybe you don't have the right schedule. Now, maybe you kind of wing your schedule, whatever the case is. But like I said, we all press the reset button. So I don't know about you guys, but the gym is like the most, one of the most important parts of my life. You know, I get up every single day around six and I'm not going to lie. Last year when I was on my hall of fame run, I was up at 5 a.m. every single day. That's for you guys that don't know, we have a 5 a.m. club on iMessage. We should all be in it, really. Even if you're going to slack in it, right? It's still an accountability measure for you to be getting up early in the morning. And if you're on your come up, there's no reason you should be up past six o'clock in the morning. And the first thing I like to focus on is you should really be in the gym by 630 in the morning every single day, Monday through Friday, at least. Right. So the first portion of what I'm going to speak about is your schedule. How does your schedule look on a day to day? And it's all going to correlate to the end portion of this training. So your schedule, no gym at 2 p.m., no gym at 3 p.m. For you guys that go to the gym at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., God bless you. Because at when I was on the come up, when I didn't have 100K in the bank, I felt stupid for going to the gym at 7 or 8 o'clock. And why is that? And that means because, yes, I'm taking care of myself, but I also just missed out on two hours to dial the leads that I didn't close yet. Mind you, I'm not where I want to be financially. 
So I never went to the gym at six, seven, eight o'clock at night because you you're still on the come up. Like you're still you can dial till eight o'clock at night. So just know if that's your schedule now that you're just just know that you're missing out on dialing. You know, you're missing out on an extra presentation. You're missing out on an, on an extra point of contact. You know how many times I stayed on Zoom my first year to 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern time every single night, no matter what, no questions asked. I was in the gym by 6, 6.30, and I was – the next important thing is you guys, if you go to the gym early, not staying there for two hours, right? You should be home. You should be showered. And you should be ready to get on Zoom all before 8 o'clock. Because going to the gym early is great. But if you're still not getting on Zoom till 9, 9, 9 or 10 o'clock at night or in the morning, then that defeats the purpose. Which, hey, if you want to still keep going to the gym at 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, but you don't have 100 bands in the bank, then I'm sure, you can do that. Just know you're missing out. The, the next advisor is beating you. The, the hungry person like me my first year was swamping you guys. Because I was willing to sacrifice and adjust my schedule. Yes, I didn't like getting up. I still don't like to get up early. But I sacrificed my first 12 months, changed my schedule, so I can have that extra two hours at the end of the day to dial. And it all stemmed from that discipline, which ended up really getting me to where I wanted to be my first year. So by long story short there, you should really be in the gym by 6 o'clock. If you're not going to the gym at 6 o'clock, and you're not back home by 7.30, showered, you already ate, and you're sitting down on the seat going, getting on Zoom by 7.55, you're you're really slacking, right? I want you guys to really know that. And I'm not here to sweet talk you. And I, I don't mean it to say it to sound cool or sound better, right? But the, the reality is, is if, if you're not if, if you're not where you want to be and you can't make Zoom, you can't have a schedule like this, right? And you can't be on Zoom by 7.55 and making your first dial by eight, I don't know what's to tell you. And these are the little things that add up. So your first dial being on Zoom at eight o'clock is great. But the reality of that is you do that. So right when eight o'clock hits, when your clock turns eight o'clock, you can make your first dial. You should be making your first dial on ringy, right? And you should be getting as many points of contact as possible, preferably 10 to 20 points of contact in the morning, in the morning time, right? And two to three people in presentations all before two o'clock. All right. So you're, if you're stuck and you can't figure it out, this is where you're lacking. You're not getting enough points of contact. The points of contact 10 to 20, it should be a, it should be a fireworks show in the morning as far as your phone ringing nonstop. It should be ding, 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 ring, ring, ring. Oh, hello, Steve. Hey, Steve, this is uh, William calling from the Benefit Center about that request you put in for the life insurance. I have your date of birth here as 1-20-1953. Is that correct? Perfect. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. My name is William. I'll be the one processing your request. Um, let me know when you have that. By the way, was this coverage for you or you and a spouse as well? Right? Boom. Just automatic. And that brings me, like, there's so many things that I can talk about, script, schedule, passion, how you talk, tonality, stuff like that. But right now, I'm just giving you guys the basics on the structure of how it needs to look. So 10 to 20 points of contact, two to three presentations by two. Your target every day should be two closes before two. Two closes before 2 p.m. A lot of us go a whole week without a close. And I sit back in a chat and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, where are the sales at? Like, where are the sales? If you're making 10 to 20 points of contact before two o'clock and you're getting two to three people on the phone in a Prezi and you're reading the script that we recreated for you and you're putting a little umph into it, your chest into it, speaking with passion and you actually believe in what you do, that you can serve that family. Why can't you get them to grab a pen and paper? Why can't you get them to go through an intake process with you? Like there's really not that complicated. You're calling them, you're you're speaking with your chest, talk with your chest, talk with your heart, use good tonality, get the damn client to grab a pen and paper. Yeah, this is a request you put in here for the funeral and final expense burial coverage. I'm assuming when you put in this request, you had a beneficiary in mind, correct, Steve? Gotcha. Was this coverage for you or you and a spouse as well? Okay, perfect. So my name is William. So like I said, I'm the advisor assigned to your request. 
just grab a pen and paper real quick. I have to give you my license information, a point of contact for me, and then we can go over the concerns that you had. Let, let me know when you're ready. So that's a whole nother training I can do on how to how to really structure that tonality, where it's like you're getting what you need out of the phone process. Because a lot of you guys call these leads and it's just like you sound like a robot. Hey, this is a little, you're just reading the paper, like forget the paper, remember the paper, memorize the paper. Every day when you wake up, if you don't, if, if your skill set is kind of lacking, you shouldn't be reading anything but the script. You should just be memorizing and implementing the script that, you know, I haven't done final expense for o o almost a year. And I see you guys see how I just spit out the script that I haven't even said in over 12 months. It's because it's subconsciously sub uh, whatever they call that subconscious conscious or whatever it is. It's already implanted in my mind. You know, and that's the little stuff behind how good are how much are you willing to put into your craft? How can you make the script a subconscious portion of it's already in your mind? You know what to say. It's on autopilot. If any, if you if you try to be a robot with anything, try to be a robot with that. Because there's two ways to be a robot. You can be a robot and just read the script, or you can be robotic because you have it so memorized that you just know what to say every time they say something. The rebuttals are just like, oh, I already got it taken care of. Perfect. That's the reason we're calling. Uh, which one of our carriers did you go with um, and how much coverage? Oh, you went with Lumico. Perfect. That's one of our secondary carriers. Is there a reason that you went with them? Because we only place people with them if they had cancer, stroke, or heart attack in the la in the last six months. Is that Was that your case? Perfect. Well, you might actually qualify for a rate reduction because you don't have those medical um, conditions. So why don't you grab that pen and paper? Let's just go over the numbers thoroughly. Make sure you're in the best position possible. Like, boom, that's the skill set stuff that I'm talking about. And a lot of you guys been here for six months, but you're not that sharp yet. It's like you need to get that sharp as quick as possible. Like, um, are you looking for additional coverage? Oh, I already got this taken care of. OK, perfect. So when you put this request in, were you looking for better coverage, more coverage or cheaper coverage, Mary? Because you just put the request in an hour ago. So better, more, cheaper coverage. Oh, I was looking for maybe cheaper coverage. Well, that's why I'm calling, Mary. Um, let's go over the process with you real quick. Grab that pen and paper. I'd like to see what you got set up with. And by the way, did you get your policy packet in the mail? That's also why we're calling. It's like, boom, just be sharp. Get that skill set right. Get those words right. I don't know if you guys got to practice it in front of a mirror. You need to get your sisters and cousins in front of you and be like, hey, guys, I need to practice for an hour. Give them 10 bucks. You know, give give your 10-year-old cousin, be like, hey, I'll give you 10 bucks. Just sit with you. Sit here with me for an hour and let me do this with you and, and just tell me, give me rebuttals. Like just little stuff like that, right? I could go give my 10-year-old little cousin right now. Here, I'll give you 10 bucks for ice cream. You do got to sit here with me for 30 minutes and help me get good at this thing that I'm doing. But a lot of you guys won't take that 30 minutes. You won't put up that $10. You're not, you got to be creative, get better in a quicker amount of time. So... The whole process here is, you know, follow the schedule, 10 to 20 points of contact, but don't not consider that the skill set and what you do on the side, as far as how you learn how to say these things is just as important as this part. So when you get two closes before 2 p.m., guess what you're doing? You're doing what's called, you're creating momentum for yourself. So the momentum that you create comes from activity. And that's why I'm highlighting this stuff. Get in the gym by 6.30, get out of the gym by 7.20, get at home, shower, eat, get on Zoom by 8, drill phones till 10.20. This is what I did in the beginning. From 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. I maybe left that house one time in the beginning. Two, two closes before 2 p.m., create momentum. Right. And when you start getting too close for 2 p.m., the, the momentum equals cash flow. So now it comes down to, OK, I went through the whole application process. Maybe some of them banged on banking, whatever. But then you end up closing a couple of them and you consistently do that, guys. For your first six to nine months. So if you're not willing to do that, you're going to stay in a hamster wheel for a long time. So the goal is to 10, 20, 30K in commissions to your bank account 
right? And then the next key there is upping your lead flow. When you make money, put it into the business. When you make money, increase the quality of your leads. And I was just telling my people this yesterday. It's like a lot of us are still dialing. We're, we've been here for six plus, you know, we've been here, some of us been here six to 18 months and we're still dialing CRM leads. Like going the cheap route, $3, $4 leads, which is cool. Like, I, you know, that's what I did in the beginning as well. But like, if you're going to do that, if you're going to buy the CRM leads, this is where this is the most important because the goal of that is to get to 10, 20, 30, even 40 K. Right. And then upping your lead spend or getting plugged in with some sort of a uh, Facebook vendor. Like Christo has one. I have a good connection for it. Getting some sort of marketing set up where you have a live campaign for leads, advertising, going through Facebook, they're filling out forms. They're putting their information. Maybe they land on your calendar. Like, guys, I don't even dial the phone. And the reason I say that is because for me, I value my time more than money. So when I tell you guys to spend more money on leads, get better leads, it's because there's two ways to do the business from a lead standpoint. You can go the cheap route and get your three, four dollar, five dollar leads, right? And you can do that forever. And you're going to work your ass off every single day. And you're going to, you know, try to get your 10 to 20 points of contact. And you might close, you might get some IP on the report, but then the transition has to happen of you make money and then you're willing to put more money into leads. Like guys, I dropped 10 K, I dropped 10 K a month just on leads, you know? And I do that. And I say that because I truly value my time more than money. So if I have to put up 10, 15 K a month for leads and I don't even have to make a phone call and I wake up to a calendar slammed every day with three to eight appointments on it, that's the life that I'm looking for, you know, and I just keep that in recognition for yourself because the goal of the business to, is eventually to buy your time back. So let's talk about, you know, you get to two o'clock and then, right, you make your first couple of sales. Right. A lot of you guys, you would make two sales and maybe you're like, damn, I did good today. Let me go take a break for a couple hours, go to the park, go for a drive, blah, 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 whatever. This is your break. This is your lunch break from two to two thirty. And it should be you going to your kitchen. That's 10 feet away. It shouldn't be going down to the restaurant, hanging out for a couple hours. This should be your break. And then from two thirty to six, you should have a massive attack on your leads and getting another 10 to 20 points of contact. And that's the day-to-day, -day, guys, for your first 12 months. Like, I I promise you guys, if you attack your day-to-day -day like this, and at the end of the day, you can go back to our circle of life, which is you did your five presentations, which I, I honestly, I'm giving you guys a formula where you can blow past this number. If you actually attack like that, you can get up, you know, five to 10 prezies a day. And then five sales in one day equals 5K in one day. So imagine making 5K a day. My phone is going nuts, but hold on a second. Um, so just picture it that way. Like imagine making 5K a day. Well, let's just let's just play small, right? For example, you do five, 10 prezies for the day, and say you lock in three of them. And we know the average commission here is a thousand bucks, right? So, I mean, we do three times 3,000, say you close three, that equals what? 3K for the day. And then how quickly you get that depends again on your skill set, which is called an effective date. So, a lot of you guys are pushing effective dates out for two, three weeks, waiting for your commission, where there's just certain things that you can say. And guys, the part in the script that has the uh, effective date stuff, I made that part, I believe, in the in the script that we all use. Okay, so today is June 27th. Um, you know, you're going to see your first premium come out within the first one to three days, and then it will draft every month on the, on, on the 27th. So make sure you put that in your calendar. You have the money in your bank account, correct? Perfect. Okay. So you'll also get your policy packet in the mail, blah, 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 blah. I'm your advisor moving forward. Please call me when you get your packet and say they say, they say uh, 
you know, I don't have the money in the account. Oh, okay. So that changes things here, Greg. So um, my next question would be, how early can you do this? Because the carrier will only let, let me push it out typically three to seven days from now. You know, so we have one of two options. We can have you go to the bank and get the money in there. So then I can push it out five days for you max, or we can go back to the quote tool and we can bring the coverage down, bring the premium down and get the policy in effect today. Which direction would you like to go? Very simple. You're just effectively communicating that process with them. You know, so this three, I say that because this 3000 needs to land in your bank account as quick as possible, right? Because you have to create this cash flow. So the cash flow comes with a mixture of your effective date skill set and then your daily routine of 10 to 20 points of contact and your massive, massive attack on your leads from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., getting two to two by two, and then drilling the phone from 2.30 to 6, right? And then if you guys really want to be winners and you really want to hit the exit plan quicker, you got it some in the beginning. I don't know about you guys, but I was dialing till 11 o'clock every night. I was the last one off Zoom every single night. And if you guys don't know my numbers, the first year, I did about 100K in commissions. My first nine months doing this. No experience before that. I don't wear a gold hat. I'm not special. I basically am just like everybody else. I just choose to really do this because there's people that, sort of do this. And then there's people that say, hey, I'm an insurance professional with a really good license that I can exercise. Let me maximize this. You know? So <laughs> that's another scenario. So I was talking about some other stuff. But um, yeah, so and I could talk about it too. Because I mean, if you don't, if you don't uh, figure out a way to really scale and get hundreds of thousands of dollars in your bank account, like I said, I called it the matrix here, but basically you're going to be stuck in the rabbit hole for a long time. And then basically once you guys can, you know, and that just comes down to awareness, you know, and just understanding that if you don't move with urgency in the beginning, eventually you're just going to be stuck in the same spot forever. So you have to, you know, not lack awareness and really just look at, hey, based off how I'm operating now, where do I see myself in the next 12 to 18 months? And there's really no re um, resting until you got the 100K, you know, making six figures consistently every single year, right? Working less, making, um, and that my, that's my next portion. So what once you guys get into that part, is like you scale the business, you do the final expense thing. And I'm sure you guys see it in the chat. Grant, Johnny, um, Espo, Jared, Justin Dorn, Johnny. Whoever else is doing IULSR, if I missed you, 